Hi, how are you? That is good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I said that I'm going to start by taking a recap uh, about what we covered in the previous class. So in the previous class, uh, we looked at the SQL injection. And uh, in the SQL injection, we did what? Uh, we looked at different types of injection. But before we reached even the SQL injection, what we did, uh, what we did, uh, we first defined SQL, why we need SQL. So, and also we explained the reason why we need SQL. You said that when you're writing projects, you need something called database. A database is a storage where you keep your what? Where you keep uh, your data. Because uh, most applications that we'll be writing, most softwares, will be having, I mean, they will be made of files. So, and, but maybe, may, may, different user scenarios or different user cases. For example, we said like a school management system, you can have 20 students or 50 students in that school, but all of them, you need to display them in a single file or in a single page, maybe for, a, for example, for a student's profile. So we said that uh, if you want to display maybe 20 students in one simple, in one file, not to create a, a static file times 20, if you want to use a logic that you write one file only and then use that file to display all the, diff the all the information all the, the information about all students it means that you'll need another a logic or another software that will help you to keep the records that are only dynamic for example if you have you're recording maybe student name and and, and 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 the class and maybe and the photo so those are the things that you record in the storage that is dynamic. Then things like design, colors, HTML, and CSS, you write them only one time. Then you'll be fetching the information from the other storage and then display them in this one file that is static, for example, HTML, and just be changing the records that are changing, that, that are dynamic. So we say that storage is called the database. And uh, that storage, it has its own rules that you have to follow. So you keep only their records that can change anytime, and then you'll be fetching them, and then you display them. So that is just like one scenario. But there are so many scenarios where you can need such kind of what? Such kind of storage, which, which is called database. So we said that database, there are different types of database. For example, there is Oracle, there is MySQL, etc. Then uh, we said those, that those storage, all oh, those storages, the databases, there is a standard language that we always communicate with them, and the, that language is called what? SQL. So that language, a standard querying language, SQL, we have different types of uh, SQL, but the most, most standard one, just like there is HTML, which is a standard way of writing uh, web pages. So also a standard of communicating database is called what? HT, I mean, uh, SQL. So that language is the one that connects us with the database and then we display this information to a web, to a web page. But we say that when you're connecting data from, I mean, when you're connecting uh, information, I mean, when you're collecting information from the database, you need uh, an intermediate language that will be doing the logic to get the information from the database and then maybe loop and maybe make some condition, maybe do something like that. So we say that language is called what? The programming language and we have different types of programming language among them it can be php it can be java it can be javascript it can be uh, c sharp etc so those are the languages that we have to connect to database then make some logic and then uh, send that information to the user so but our main focus was on that language that we use to collect data from what from database because it is just like a uh, a, 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 a car or a, a, a how should I call it uh, a transporter that we, uh, enables us to fetch the data from the other storage. So we see that that car or that transmission medium can can be really can be really very handy. Uh, whereby if we don't do it properly, people can use uh, that uh, that transition system or that communication medium to manipulate our data and we looked at very many different dangers that uh, can be resulted if someone finds a way to manipulate what manipulate 
uh, that transition medium or what you can call SQL. So that, uh, that process of someone targeting your SQL so he can manipulate it or he can do something that you did not intend to do. That process is what you call what? What you call SQL injection. And we also went ahead and said that this SQL injection can be either by your own, by by your by someone's intention or user's intention, or it can be by your own intention. Then we went ahead and looked at different types of SQL injection and what can cause SQL injection. We say that if you do things in a lazy way, for example, you collect the data from uh, the user and you just uh, write an SQL without cleaning that data or without checking for the script. Can someone mute? But you know, but you know. Mute your microphone, please. Okay. So I'm uh, summarizing the previous class so we can proceed. Um, guys, if you're not saying anything, you can do it. Um, here you know, saying, and then Richard, Richard, mute or kill Richard. If you have nothing to say, mute. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm 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 finalizing the previous lecture, and I will say that. Um, uh, we said that uh, so he said that uh, if if someone finds a way to manipulate your SQL can be really 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 dangerous and one of the way is by allowing users to enter the data into your system or your application and then you go ahead and be so much lazy and just collect that data and put it straight to your database without checking for dangerous character or without implementing countermeasures to reduce the SQL injection. So if you do that uh, then means that uh, your system, someone can accidentally uh, uh, mess with the database or uh, intentionally mess with the database. For example, how accidentally, for example, if there is an apostrophe with, in my name and I go ahead and put it in your system, yet you know an apostrophe can uh, affect uh, a syntax of SQL. So what does it mean? I can put it there uh, without my intention and I end up uh messing with the heart with the database so we say that sql injection is something that you really be uh you need to be very much careful about and uh when you're doing your system then we went, uh, we went ahead and looked at the different programming languages uh that can be affected by sql injection so we also conclude that you don't depend on the programming language and say that ah me i'm using python so to communicate my database and Python is powerful, maybe it's not uh, prone to SQL injection. No, programming languages, they are stupid things. They don't think, okay? So if you don't make them uh, effective, they can still do a stupid thing. It's just like a knife. You can use a knife to do something good like cutting meat, etc. But you can use the same knife to kill yourself, okay? So that's how programming languages are. They give you ability to do anything. You can use them to do harm or good. So if you you cannot depend on a certain programming language that it is pro, it is not prone to SQL injection and then start doing things in a lazy way. No, as long as the pro, programming language still it will be pro, that communicate the database still be prone to uh, SQL injection. So we say that uh, when you're writing that uh, uh, things that are going to communicate database, we need to be careful of uh, SQL injection regardless of programming language. So. I went ahead and looked at different uh, types of SQL injection. We also looked at uh, SQL injection, for example, uh, based on the fact that uh, one is always equal to one. Uh, so if you find, figure out a way and uh, put maybe an O and say one equal to one, uh, you can end up accessing things that you are not supposed to do to access if a programmer did not put that into consideration. We went ahead and looked at the uh, different examples like batch comments, I mean batch execution of SQL. We also demonstrated that whereby we were able to execute more than one SQL where someone was trying to select a user to see if to, when they're trying to log in. And then for us, we stopped that SQL and went ahead and dropped the table. And so we were able to successfully drop the table. So just you can imagine how much that can be really handy. Uh, so 
be much very you need to be very careful when you do that they did the sk detection did it then we looked at the we looked at the uh how we can uh, uh try to reduce these risks of sk rejection and that is where we looked at the uh, way uh for example creating uh, the pre uh, prepared statements uh uh checking for dangerous characters uh, also using uh, start procedures, etc. So if you look at different ways of how we can uh, escaping uh, uh, escaping uh, strings that are dangerous. So I hope you went ahead and did maybe more research about it and found a way how you can uh, get rid of it. You can reduce the risk of this situation. So in a recap, that's what we covered in the previous class. So we I hope you are now remembered. So if you bring such question in the exam, you should be able to do what? Uh, to pass them because they are not really simple. And we have taught, we have taught you slowly by slowly. So if you are really attentive, I hope if you did not really grasp the same, you did not memorize like understanding it, the exact same thing that we talked, at least you must have understood uh, or relate what we are talking about. So uh, that's it. Uh, that brings us to our next topic, which is uh, cross-site uh, scripting, what we call XSSH. All right. Uh, so let's start. So um, the hint of Mubarak, and together with Dr. Drake, uh, they're going to demonstrate to you, or going to to present to you, uh, this new. And a new topic, which is a cross-site scripting attack, which is also a security, a software security threat, what you call XSS. So I hope you can see the screen. I hope you can see the slides. So we begin. So what you're going to cover today, uh, we are going to cover. I didn't see. We're going to cover the SQL. I mean, so we're going to cover the cross-site scripting attack. We'll cover the reflected XSS. We'll cover the persistent XSS. We'll cover the damage done by XSS attacks. We'll also look at uh, attack. I mean, we we'll also look at uh, XSS uh, befriend with others attack. I then also looked at uh, XSS attacks to change other person's profile that's also another example to look at and also look at the self uh, propagation of XSS attacks then also looked at the uh, different countermeasures that we can do for uh, to get at reducing the risk of what of XSS attack so let us begin uh, from the big uh, from the first point uh, by defining what is meant by XSS attack or cross-site scripting attack. So in XSS, an attack injects his or her malicious code to the victim's browser via the target website. So this XSS, most, uh, much of it is uh, depending on website or web applications. So in simple terms, a person who wants to attack you, they will be able to successfully display their own things in your website, kind of hijacking. You have designed your website, it is ready to go, everything, it is okay. And when you share the link, someone is showing wrong things on your domain or even uh, doing some kind of fraud. So someone being able to have control over on your website and display his own things or their own thing that's what we call cross-site scripting attack so xsh attacks a class of web security vulnerability that enable attackers to bypass same origin policy implemented in web browsers so as we say that these attacks the xss attack they depend most of them they depend on what on web application or websites they don't depend on what on um, mobile application or other kind of software they depend on the websites and also uh 
their target is to violate what you call same origin policy which you call, what you can call SOAP that is implemented in web browsers so after this class we can write down and do search about same origin policy so this policy i can break it to you into a simple way it is just a simple policy that says things that are on the domain i mean things that are that are to be displayed on the website they must be coming on that particular domain i repeat uh same origin policy means that things that are displaying on the website on a specific website they should be coming from that particular website let us say javascript they should be coming from that particular domain so if you if if uh, you, i mean if you try to display things from different domain on the same particular website but they are different domains the website or the web browser will stop you depending i mean uh, uh, basing on this policy called same origin policy so why that same origin policy that, uh, that same origin policy is implemented to avoid the frauding for example uh being able to say maybe a website maybe you uh, for for let us say for mobile money and you're able to, and maybe your own website but you're able to display maybe things for mobile money or let us say like a, a website for that you can use to transact mobile money or a bank transaction you you're displaying things from what from a different domain so that will be kind of what of kind of crowd so all browsers they have a uh, same origin policy to avoid such kind of browse a domain is reading a different thing and what you're doing and what you're seeing on your website you're seeing different things for example a domain may be reading maybe mtn.co.ug but when you visit the website maybe you're seeing totally different things maybe like pornography so that poly that is not allowed why because you may do we may do that kind of what that kind of crowd so a domain need to reflect what comes from its own server or what it is related to its own domain but being able to display maybe a different website on the website and uh, and proposing to be uh proposing to show the content that uh, are uh, that are supposed to be on that on that what on that particular domain so you're violating you'll be violating the policy of what of same origin policy so if those, for those who program i don't know whether you've ever tried to do uh asynchronous loading on the on the on the website and then maybe like google chrome it stops you or it does not fetch the, the data from a different domain or if you've ever tried to load a css file uh, whereby a css file or a javascript file is coming from another domain and then google browser i mean google google chrome it stops you it says that you cannot load that file because it's coming from another domain so that limitation is what we call a uh, same origin policy the content that displays on your website should be coming from the same domain or the public domain that are are, are, are recognized for sharing that information so that is same origin policy so for this cross access attack they viol they can violate this policy whereby you have your own website maybe a personal blog but someone successfully loads his own website into your website someone visits your own domain but someone shows his website so having that access you will have violated this policy called same origin policy and that what cross site attack cross site as uh, cross site scripting attack does so the same origin policy is a security policy that prevents web pages from accessing resources from other domains i've already explained it okay then uh, cross site attacks exploit this vulnerability by injecting malicious code into the web page that runs in the context of a different domain so i've already also explained it and i think the speed that we are using we are not very fast we are going slowly by slowly so you can understand things properly.
So if these two terms comes into your exam, I hope you'll be able to differentiate it. You say what is a cross excess attack? I mean, when excess is attack, you'll be able to tell. And if we ask you, ask you SQL injection, you should also be able to tell the other one is about SQL. This is about attacking the website by violating the same origin policy. Okay. So if you never had these classes, or if you never had these two classes, and you didn't know these things, of course, you could confuse them. But I hope the speed that we are using, we are using your understanding things. So we can proceed. Uh -huh. I designed for you this diagram uh, to show you or to demonstrate to you how XSS attack happens. So this is uh, the website. Let me get your annotation. So this is your website that is on the server. So you have hosted it and you have started sharing the what? The link to users. So if this malicious person or the attacker want to attack your website through malicious code, I mean through cross access attack, you can see the diagram. He will send his malicious code through the link and then he, pro he make it proceed to the what? To the website user or the, the user. So you should observe one thing. This dotted line or this part that shows the code it is not saved on what? It is not saved on what? On your browser. I mean, on your server. You can see it is just bouncing through the link and then proceed to the what? To the user's computer. So it is does not. It is not saved on your what? Your server. That is one type of what? Of XSS attack. So the the whole point here it is targeting the website and the, it does not what? It, it, it most of cases it does not it is not stored on your what on your server whereby you pass all the malicious uh or the attacker he pass his information into the what i mean through the link to the user so if this guy successfully uh demonstrate i mean successfully acts your website and do process attack then this user or what you call the victim or your customers will be able to access your website, but they are seeing things that this person intended to do what to show. You can see he's sending his black malicious code. It bounces, doesn't even be, uh, touch your website through the link. It comes and then it starts being executed here on the website. So you may see it as a simple thing, but it is very dangerous thing. For example, let's say that you've done a kind of uh, a Jumia website, okay? A Jumia, uh, sorry, uh, when I say Jumia, I know what I mean because the most popular. You've done an e commerce website, okay? And uh, you accept payments, right? So maybe if a user or a customer comes and buys something, he should be able to do what? To place his card and then pay you. So what if this person is able to send here his own JavaScript? What does it mean? It means that a JavaScript file. I mean, a JavaScript code can manipulate everything in the heart in the web browser. This person can send his JavaScript here. So as he send his JavaScript here, he can load now things directly from his server. Maybe he hide your website and then he display his own what? His own website. You get he hides, he can write JavaScript that can hide everything of the your code that you wrote but he displays his old code. So if your website was like this, okay, he can do something that exactly looks like yours, but he displays his own website. So when you ask the person maybe to enter his card, okay, and uh, submit the payment, this is maybe the button. So this person can also possibly design the same thing, okay? And then ask the people to do what to submit. So this is you, and and this is the attacker's uh, page. So he can ask the person to do what to submit. So when this customer places his card, places his password, and then submit, so the money does not come to your account, but the money goes to his account. So 
that can also be really really dangerous so this is just one scenario but there are so many scenarios that can result to the i mean that can result from a person having the ability to display their own code on your what on your website it can sound simple it can sound simple but it is really really dangerous imagine you design your website but when people visit your website they're seeing different things like pornography so that is so bad it can be embarrassing if you're not that type of person i've given you an example you design a, a system that will allow the payment but when someone comes to register i mean to pay the money goes to the wrong person that can also really really can also really be can also be really frustrating and dangerous there are so many ways imagine maybe you it's a school system and you're allowing the maybe the customers to register or your the student to, to sign up using the website but when they sign up they sign up on the code that goes to this guy or to the wrong guy so i mean for you you'll be waiting for people to sign up while things are not coming back but they're going to the wrong person so you can imagine different scenarios that can result for someone having the ability to show their code into your website or to execute their scripts into excuse me sir yes please uh i have a question okay i hope it's so this, yeah. yeah it's about this huh? okay. now the people who are providing the hosting services mm. for your website mm. can't they detect that someone mm. is sending something weird on your domain oh okay i'll answer that i will answer it with an example as we proceed so just uh i've understood that question but uh, the point is they will not but and i will answer it with what with an example they will not and i will answer it with example uh, so you remind me okay i will tell you when i'm explaining but the point is the people who are hosting your website they will not first of all for them they give you a storage so security everything is up to you okay it's just someone like who sells you land so if i sell you land don't tell me again i'll take care of thieves i'll take care of thieves who may come and steal your and break through your house i'll take care of pests and diseases which may attack your crops i'll take care no for me i'll sell you land so you put there your garden and the rest many consequences will be up to you so you the website owner you're the one to take care of this kind of what of this kind of security vulnerability someone who sends who gives you a website i mean to host your website do not take care of you of your sql injection will not take care of such kind of what of attacks and i'll also show you how it is obviously up to you not up to them i've given you a simple example if i sell you land i've sold it to you it is your land then for me i'll just go so whatever I use that land for or whatever happens for that land maybe thieves have come and still have stolen your crops or they have broken through your houses or paste and this is they're attacking your crops that is up to you okay so these guys they provide us just hosting the remaining consequences security etc it's you to take care of for now i will answer it with the word with an example but for now have you understood the point uh who asked what, yes. was, what was your name uh mr peter was okay mr peter have you got my point yes yes, yes. okay so in the proceed i'll show you the example how it is about you not about the what uh about the people who are hosting i'll show you a practical example okay so it's good you're following yeah it's good you're attentive uh, excuse so me we have different categories yes i, I wanted to ask does the your URL name? on the website change first first uh, this, is, this is Jablon. hey Jablon. <laughs> okay does uh -huh. the url of the website change 
or does it remain the same as it is being attacked? It will change as I'll demonstrate to you. So it is just like you so you give me your website. Oh, I just land on your website and you tell me to share the link. Oh, for me, I can you let us say you have an e-commerce website, but for me, I learned that it has vulnerability of uh, processes uh, processes um, attacked. You will see the most most of these things will be passing through what through the URL. So for me, I code that it is your domain maybe jablon at eshop.com. I mean at jablon.eshop.com. So for me, I realize that Jablon's website is, has problem with what? With processes attack. So for me, I write my code, I attach it on that code, I attach it on what? On your domain, and I help you to promote the website. I share the link, I share the link, I share the link, but the link that I share, it has malicious code. So that people will visit your website thinking they are coming to the e-commerce website. By the end of the day, I'm the one manipulating. Okay, so I will share with you uh, how processes attack is done, and uh, I will show you uh, how how someone can manipulate. But the whole point it, it goes through the what through the URL get get parameter. So our time is up for the first session, but let me finish this next the next slide, and then we go for a short break, and then I will also show you the the link, and then we we'll go for a short break. I hope you put your chat, your names in the chat, okay? I mean your IDs and the what in the chat. Okay, so let's look at these categories. Then we go for a short break. So categories of cross site. Oh my God. Issue no, okay. So these are categories of cross site scripting attacks. The first one we have non persistent or reflected excesses attack. So this one is not, uh, it's just a temporary one, it is not persistent. Another one we have persistent attack or what you call the stored word, the stored attack. So in the next session, we we'll begin from here. And also we'll go ahead and do some what some practical. So put your name into the chat, and then we go for five minutes, six minutes, and the, at eleven um, at at ten past eleven we come back for our last session. Exactly ten past eleven. Ten past eleven. You should be back and we resume. So for those who are not fasting, you can go and, you can go and drink some water. 